This is Africa News Tonight on The Voice of America. Hello and welcome. Welcome to VOA Africa. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yehiyas Wuhib in Washington. Humanitarian workers need assurances of safety and security in order to continue delivering critical humanitarian and health response. That's WHO spokesman Christian Lindemeyer on the rising number of attacks on healthcare workers in Sudan. Details coming up also. Egypt is limiting electricity used with daily cutbacks nationwide. And World Food Program is slowly resuming food aid to Ethiopia. These stories and more on African News Tonight. First, our top story, the military junta in Niger has cut ties with Nigeria after the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS, failed to resolve the leadership crisis in Niamey. A reporter in Abuja, Nigeria, spoke to some analysts on why the junta is isolating itself from other nations. The high-powered peace talks delegation sent by ECOWAS chairman and Nigeria president Bola Tinubu had arrived in Niger to establish a dialogue with the junta in order to obtain the return to constitutional order and the reinstatement of the democratic president Mohamed Bazoum. The spokesperson for Niger's coup leader, Colonel Mohamed Amadou Abdurrahman, announced that Niger had severed ties with Nigeria in a broadcast last Thursday, according to Radio France International. Frank Tete, a human rights lawyer and political analyst, says it was obvious the military government is desperate to form new alliances. It is also struggling to be assertive by appearing that it has resolved not to give in to the threats by ECOWAS. The decision of the junta to close the borders of Niger against Nigeria is a mere grandstanding to impress the people of Niger. It is rather a poor show of strength that is most likely to further hurt the people of Niger. The Nigerian government had closed the country's border with the Republic of Niger following the military takeover in the West African country in July. Tete is calling on ECOWAS to employ all tools of dialogue in dealing with the junta. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of Nigeria, who is also the chairman of ECOWAS, must be very careful not to be drawn into this contest of military and economic supremacy that is being touted by the Nigerian junta. Rather, more time and greater effort must be expended in finding a diplomatic solution to the present situation in Niger. Public affairs analyst Jideojo, who describes the situation in the Niger Republic as unfortunate, says diplomacy would help avert any further damage between the two neighboring countries. Nigeria at present has over 300,000 refugees in the Niger Republic and seven states in Nigeria shares border with Nigeria. These seven states will be economically affected when there is a refugee problem in Niger. On Friday, President Bola Tinubu wrote to Nigerians' parliament seeking its support for military intervention against the junta. Ojo commended the parliament for its efforts to resolve the conflict in a non-violent manner. The president is um, receiving a law of counsel from within the country and outside. And it's heartwarming that the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria last Saturday did not approve of the deployment of troops in Niger. Ojo pointed out that good governance is the best way to avert military takeovers in Africa. Eight days ago, ECOWAS issued a seven-day ultimatum to the junta for the reinstatement of President Bazoum to power. For VOA News, from Abuja, Nigeria. The second ranking U.S. diplomat met Niger's military leaders yesterday to press them to reverse their coup but reported no headway a day after an ultimatum from the West African bloc, ECOWAS, was ignored. Victoria Newland, acting deputy secretary of state, said she met for more than two hours with military chiefs who ousted democratically elected President Mohamed Bazoum on July 26th. Nuland's trip, conducted in secrecy until she, until she left, came after the expiration of a deadline set by ECOWAS to reinstate Bazoum by midnight on Sunday or risk military intervention. 
The French news agency AFP says Nulan described her talks as extremely frank and at times quite difficult. She said she offered the coup leaders a number of options to end the crisis and restore ties with the United States, which, like other Western nations, has suspended aid. Nulan said she met Brigadier General Musa Salau Baramu, who has been named the new military chief of staff and who has worked closely in the past with the United States, which, along with former colonial power France, has based anti-jihadist operations in the Sahel out of Niger. Nulan said she warned Niger against following neighboring Mali in bringing in mercenaries from Russia's Wagner Group, who she said are a risk to the sovereignty of countries who invite the group in. ECOWAS is reconvening for its own diplomatic push on the crisis with a summit Thursday in Nigerian capital Abuja. Terrorist groups such as Akim and the Islamic State use the vast, in part very mountainous areas of Fazan in southern Libya as a safe haven where they can operate almost completely unchallenged with a logistics depot, training, deployment and evasion area. Wolfgang Posch, the former Austrian military attaché in Libya, explains to VOA senior analyst Mohamed El Shanawi how these terrorist groups could exploit the fragile situation in Niger and Libyan borders in expanding their activities. First, I would like to mention the current American and French deployment of troops and of intelligence assets in Niger. The United States operates a logistic and a training base in Niamey, the capital, and a drone base in Agadez in the north. This is the central element for American surveillance in the fight against terrorism in the whole Sahel region. From this base in Agadez, most of the American surveillance and combat sorties over Libya and also over the other countries in the region are flown. If the situation constitutes a coup from an official American point of view, the Americans would need to withdraw from Mali. This would mean that in order to maintain a drone base in the Sahara region, they could eventually move this base to Chad. But the drone base in Jamena, in the capital of Chad, for example, is already quite far away from the terrorist hotspots in Mali and Burkina Faso. An example, a typical mission of the MQ-9 Reaper drone is about 1,800 kilometers away from its home base. The distance from Jamena to Bamako in Mali is 2,500 kilometers. With regard to the French, Fortunately, their nuclear industry is not as dependent on the uranium from Nietzsche as it was just a couple of years ago, but they still maintain a significant military presence in Nietzsche, more than 1,500 troops. They have a main base in Niamey, and they conduct long-range and commando operations from northern Nietzsche from Madama. In this space, either a paratrooper company or a company from the French Foreign Legion is permanently deployed, and they are providing surveillance and ambushes on smuggling and terrorist groups in northern Niger, in the area of the Salvador Pass towards Libya, if the Americans and the French will withdraw. This gives the terrorist organizations much more room to maneuver throughout the region, not only in Libya, throughout the region. An engagement of the Russian Wagner group by the military regime is likely, but I'm sure they won't be able to make up for the Western support. Following the withdrawal of the French-led Takuba forces from Mali in August of 2022 and the subsequent withdrawal of French forces from Burkina Faso in 2023, France shifted its forces to Niger. Additionally, the planned withdrawal of the UN Stabilization Force from Mali by the end of 2023 puts an end to the decade-long presence of a 17,000-strong mission. How could these withdrawals and the anti-Western sentiment in Niger following the military coup risk jeopardize hard-won gains in fight against jihadist insurgency in the region. This is a very significant development. The West and especially the European Union attempted a comprehensive approach to keep Nietzsche stable and to fight terrorism. And Nietzsche is more or less the last bastion in this region for this approach. This does not mean only military support, but also significant economic and development aid. Within an integrated approach, the European Union provided support to peace building, to conflict prevention, to dialogue, and this development coordination in parallel with humanitarian assistance. Nietzsche is one of the poorest countries on the globe. The European Union alone allocated 552 million US dollars to improve governance, education, and sustainable growth in Nietzsche between 2021 and 24. 
in addition to what was provided by the member states, like Germany, which provided 132 million US dollars. And the just recently launched European Union military partnership mission in Niger was a long-term effort to enhance the military capacity and the democratization of Nigerian armed forces. All this will now be probably replaced by a less sophisticated kinetic-only approach, relying on Wagner mercenaries and Russian attack helicopters. We can see in Mali how inefficient this is. That was Wolfgang Postai, former Austrian military attaché in Libya, speaking with VOA senior analyst Mohamed al Shinawi. The South African trade union Solidarity is in talks with United States diplomats and members of Congress for the country to keep its status as a beneficiary of the American government's African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. AGOA gives certain African countries preferential trade access to U.S. markets, earning them billions of dollars in revenue from products including fruit and vegetables and motor vehicles. But some American lawmakers are pushing for South Africa to be expelled from AGOA because of its close ties with Russia. Darren Taylor reports. Relations between Washington and Pretoria have been strained ever since President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine in February 2022. President Cyril Ramaphosa's African National Congress administration has never condemned Russia for invading its neighbor. Instead, it has moved to strengthen ties with Moscow, declaring it wants greater military cooperation with Russia. Some members of Congress say this would endanger U.S. security interests. Solidarity representative Tiens Dubisson says his union's dialogue with American politicians about South Africa's AGOA membership began three months ago. At the time, we were hearing statements from high-ranking government officials saying things like America is not important to us. We saw it as very dangerous for government wishing to alienate the largest economy that makes up 10% of our exports. Those officials jeopardizing the futures of South Africa do not speak for all of government and definitely don't speak for all of South Africa. Dubusan says it's vital that U.S. lawmakers realize about half a million South Africans will lose their jobs if the country loses its AGOA status. He drafted a report about this, which he says was very well received in Washington. The exporters who actually make use of AGOA were perhaps the most important contributors to this process. As also on their own accord, without the assistance of government, contacted Washington and um, made their case and um, their plea and also showed that in some cases their businesses exist only to provide the U.S. market with products that we can produce here. Solidarity says its interaction with senior U.S. politicians is important because it gives them perspective on how critical a goer is to South African workers. According to state trade statistics, the country earned $11 billion from AGOA exports last year. Products sent to the U.S. included citrus fruits and motor vehicles. The latest statistics say bilateral trade between South Africa and Russia stands at just over $1 billion, with South Africa exporting precious metals and fresh produce to Russia. AGOA is up for renewal in 2025, but analysts expect Washington to make a decision soon on whether South Africa remains.